guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and I'm an incoming medical student starting in the fall 2020. And in today's video, I'm giving you all my tips on MCAT preparation and just my student perspective on how it is to take the MCAT. And I'm also giving you some tips on how to make this process more affordable by using free stuff. So if you are interested and think that this will be helpful, please keep watching. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just go through a PowerPoint presentation that I prepared a long time ago just to give some tips of, to pre-med students and this will just uh, outline all of the steps that I want to cover in this video. And yeah, we wanna, we wanna start by saying that the MCAT is one of the most important parts of your application and you should take it really seriously when you're coming to prepare. I'm just gonna describe a little bit of, of how the MCAT is. It is a 7.5 hour long exam. Now, because of the pandemic, they are making it shorter, but I predict that for the future, it will still be a 7.5 hour exam. So it's a long exam that you have to just prepare your stamina for it. And it's four sections. It's chem and physics, which is the first one. CARS, which stands for critical analysis and reasoning skills. Bio and biochem and lastly psychology and sociology so for the breaks you do get a 10 minute break in between the first and second section and then between the third and fourth session and you get a lunch break of 30 minutes between the second and third session okay and the t the entire exam is 10 percent discrete question which will be just the question and then a four um, option multiple choice and the rest, 90%, will be passage-based. So you will have to read passages and learn how to read efficiently and be concentrated in the reading. And then based on that passage, they will ask you questions also. So how long should you study for this exam? So I'm gonna give my own perspective first. I studied for four to five months. As I mentioned in the previous um, video, I took the semester off and started studying in January and took the exam in May 11. So I took roughly five months or so. And most people recommend to take three months of full-time studying. When I'm talking full-time studying, I'm saying six to eight hours a day where you go in the morning and you, uh, you finish in the night and you take it as a full-time job. So, but everybody is different, but for me, it was a really hard exam. So it is a hard one. Uh, so what did I do? I took two months, uh, the first two months of those five, to uh, just content review. I transcribed the information and I learned the materials, right? And then the other three months, I practiced. Three months full practice. I will do full practice exams every two or three days and, and those gap days I will review the exams so that's what I did and I did not take a course why because um, I knew that I could make a efficient schedule and I wanted to save money so I'm gonna go through all of the other the way that I did it but basically for me it wasn't necessary so the main goal is to take it only once why do I say this because people start planning to take it twice and say oh I'm gonna I'm gonna just leave space to take it in January and then also take it in May. When you start say, saying it to yourself that you have two chances, you will take it less seriously. This test requires money. Only to sign up is $300. It is time sacrificed. And I just think we need to put our 100% in our first time. It is okay, we have to take it multiple times, but only if you did bad the first time. But if you're going to this test for the first time, give it your 100% then you will see if you do bad, you have to take it another time. But if you put in your mind that this is the only chance that you get for the first time, then you will put your 100%. What materials did I use? I bought the Kaplan books. I, I think those were very accurate with the amount of, of information that I needed to know. And just try to choose one set of books. It doesn't matter what, well, I, I did Kaplan, and that's the only one that I could say that it was accurate but try to choose one company one set of books because it will take too long to read two set of books so i recommend to focus on one set of books which should have all of the information or all the content that you need 
And then what exams did I use? I bought some next step practice exams, also the AMC ones, which I think are the most accurate and um, question sets. Apart from the AMC exams that they have three or four, I believe, they also have question sets, which you can make into new exam by, for example, taking 59 questions from one category, 59 from cars, and then 59 from bio and like that. You just make an entire exam and you make it as a full length. You take it throughout the whole day from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that just gives you even more practice and for the same price because you pay for the whole packet. And then you world practice sets were really good as well. Give me a lot of good explanations. Also, Khan Academy, which I didn't use as much as I wanted, but they have a lot of free passages that you could use. And this is how you save money, guys. You use the free stuff first, and then you save the time and you schedule the time to do the ones that you bought. So now, how many practice exams did I take? I took around 10 full length practice exams from different companies because I wanted to take have a feel of how each company will ask the same question. So it's different ways of asking the questions, but the same material. And how did I take so many practice exams? because there's a lot of free materials everywhere. I'm gonna mention some. So apart from the stuff I bought, the next step gives you a free full length and half lengths to do. Princeton gives you a free full length. Altius gives you a free half length. Also, if you buy the Kaplan books, which is the one that I bought, the seven book set, they give you three free full lengths that you could do online. So there you go, you have a lot of free stuff to go through before you go into the AMC ones, which are the last, you wanna leave it for the last moment. And also I recommend to sign up for, for free seminars that the companies offer, like Next Step. I went to a lot of them and you basically are getting the, their teaching, their, their experts to teach you for free during those seminars, really difficult concepts. For example, I used it a lot for physics that though they, had, they have a lot of concepts that I found really, really challenging. So I was getting their teaching and I was also experimenting with different types of questions that they will offer through the seminar. So now, how do you review your exams? I think this is the most important part of the MCAT, in my opinion, because that's the way that you learn and you use those questions. It's not just doing the exam and then just do your wrongs or just look through your wrongs and that's it. No, you have to spend more time than the amount of time that you take, that you take to do the exam. I took almost twice the time to review the questions and also, even the questions that you got right, look over them. If they were challenging for you, but you but you got it right, look at the concepts. Review the topics, not just the question in particular, but the topics, so that you, um, you have some context. If they were to ask you the same question in other form, you will know how to answer that one. How do you know when you're ready to take the exams? Consecutive scores. You have to have consecutive scores around your goal, around three exams that you have a number around the goal that you really want. What is your goal? Reach for the stars. Just try to see what is good for you and what you want to achieve based on the last month that you're doing free practice exams. For me, I was shooting for a 510, 510. Uh, for the Kaplan exams, the free ones that they give you, I think it's two, next step in Kaplan. It's two to three points less than the real exams and then the most accurate in my opinion were the AMC ones because they're the ones that make up the test. So my actual score was an average of the three AMC ones which is, were the last ones that I did. Now what would I have done differently? Practice, practice cars every day. That was my hardest session, my weakest session because I feel like I didn't practice enough I took a strategy and then I changed my strategy and also time. Why time? Because I run out of time in cars and it's really difficult. Once you enter that room, time starts starts counting. So it's really hard, you know, to keep up and just buy a car's passage book and do those passages daily and practice full sessions, 90 minutes of cards. Um, once in a while do a schedule i'm i can maybe upload um, a schedule that i had 
before I can maybe find it in my old files but I, I do have a schedule and like an Excel sheet where I put when I'm gonna take my exams and how I'm gonna get there so yeah and then my final tips is you have to build a stamina treat every section as if it was a new session what are you gonna do after you get out of your chem and physics you go to the bathroom you put water on your face you empty your bladder every time because you don't want to be bothered by your bladder in the middle of the test so you go to the bathroom and of course if you want to drink water you drink water but you think that you're starting a new test next you don't think about the, the past section and even if the people that are taking the exam the same day as you they're talking about how the last session was really hard you just ignore build a bubble and you say i'm gonna take a new exam now i'm going at it and put water on your face because that's gonna help you wake up okay so <laughs> yeah i was passionate about that so you practice exams do them like the real ones go there and start at 8 a.m and finish at 3 p.m because that's the real timing at least do six like that six practice exams like that starting at eight finishing at three why because that's gonna like prepare your mind to the real one and once you go into the room the timer starts like i told you um so just be careful with the time and just try to concentrate as soon as you get in work on timing so the courses that really helped me with the mcat with the content review human anatomy biochem chemistry of course physics and cell biology i love cell, my cell biology class and teacher so yeah those helped me a lot uh, when preparing me for the content review and don't eat too much the day of your exam you don't want to be sick or have like a ill stomach or something the day of your exam i couldn't even i i, I brought a sandwich and i couldn't even finish it because I was so nervous so I maybe took like I think two or three bites in the lunch break but yeah don't eat too much you don't need it really if you want you can eat you can drink caffeine because it keeps you alert but yeah and ask for earplugs this is my my tip my really important tip that I think everyone should know I uh, I don't think the big headphones that they give you are good for taking the exams why because it's building weight on your head and that could give you a headache in the middle of your exam so you need to ask them because if you don't ask for them they're not gonna give it to you just enjoy the process <laughs> this is the most important part when you're taking a journey like that a four a five month journey you need to enjoy the process enjoy learning this is content that is interest some of it is, is interesting and it will be useful in your medical school career so take it as, as, as just a journey that you have to overcome and enjoy enjoy every milestone that you make every point that you're increasing your practice exams because that's the only way that you're gonna be motivated to go in and work every single day i did take a, uh, a day off of the week so i i went to the library from monday to saturday and then sunday i spent it with my family i recommend you to do that um, because your body really needs a break and also in terms of exercising this is what happened with me i started exercising in the morning before i started my my mcat shift in the beginning maybe the, the first two months like i mentioned when i was doing my content review and then i couldn't exercise anymore those three last months which is okay because it's your prime time so if you felt if you felt like you couldn't exercise throughout the whole process and and you are a, you know an exercise driven person it's okay to just take maybe two or three months of, of break of exercise because you're preparing for one of the really important exams in your life so it's fine just love yourself and try to enjoy the process try to um, do other things that that you enjoy in your time free if you can i know not, not many people can because they are working and stuff but if you can please try to start at 8 and and 8 a.m and then go through the whole day studying until 6 p.m and that's what i did I, after 7 p.m i was done for the day uh, except for the last two months or so which i also did flashcards when i came back home but yeah just try to organize your time make a schedule from the beginning your schedule is changeable but if you make one for those five months i know that it's really hard to make a schedule for a five month period but if you make one then you know 
where to go. You know, you're not lost in the middle of the process. And as you go, if you need to change some things here and there, it's okay, you know? So yeah, those are my, my tips for taking the MCAT. If you enjoyed this, um, this video and you would like me to make other more informative videos in the future, let me know. Leave a comment down below letting me know if this is useful. And don't forget to like and subscribe to not uh, lose any other videos coming in the future. Thank you.